Welcome to tonight's tale, a fairy tale theater podcast. We are going through every episode of Shelley Duvall's Fairy Tale Theater in alphabetical order. And this month, we are reviewing the episode Pinocchio. I am your host, Emily. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I'm joined by my co-host, Eric. Hey, guys. I'm Eric. I'm from New York. And this month, we're lucky enough to have two guest hosts. So first of all, I want to re-welcome our friend, Doug. Hi, from (laughs) Australia. And joining us for the first time is Liz. Hey, I'm Liz. I'm from Providence, Rhode Island. It's good to see you guys. I want to get a little background from you, Liz, since this is your first time joining us. What's your history with fairy tale theater? It was a show I watched as a very young kid. I believe my mom probably introduced it to me. She was very big on like introducing us to like culturally significant things. And I think because it's so jam packed with celebrities, this was the perfect show to do that. So we would rent it either from my library or from this tiny little video store in my tiny little hometown. I love that. Yeah. And then I recently was rewatching some because I was attempting to review the show on TikTok. That kind of fell off, but I have enjoyed rewatching it since. So I got the, I treated myself to the full DVD set. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah, I love your review videos on TikTok. They're really good. I'm sorry I don't do them still. I'll Maybe I'll figure out a way to revive them at some point. We'd love that. Eric, do you have the background information on Pinocchio? Yes. Pinocchio aired on May 14th, 1984. It was season three, episode three. So it came kind of right in the middle of the show then. Oh, yes, for sure. And as far as the filming goes of it, it was actually filmed May 9th, 1983 to May 13th, 1983. So actually right before it aired, they were they were crunching it the yeah. year before. So, And then only a few days as per usual. It was directed by Peter Medic. He's done several. Yeah, he's done yeah, a bunch. And the, the writers, of, well, of course, as always, Mark Curtis and Rod Ash was done a lot of them as well. Excellent. So before we get into our recap and review, what are the first things we remember when we think of the episode Pinocchio? Doug, I'll start with you. My mind goes straight to Lenny Kazan as the Blue Fairy. Ah, interesting choice. <laughs> Mm. she makes an impression she does (laughs) (laughs) and her look is very iconic too i think in in this episode i loved her in this anything else spring to mind certainly the Pee Wee herman of it all this was probably one of the first episodes i watched because peewee's playhouse was a regular show in my house and i also was surprised when i rewatched this on like how many of the jokes just like hit this nostalgic part of my brain so hard. I think I probably, I watched this a million times, but like these legs, they bend in the middle. And when Delaney's like, your nose is gonna grow and to grow. I was just like, oh my God, it's like all coming back to me now. Like Celine Dion sang. <laughs> Love that reference. <laughs> She's a gonna grow. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. And, and I think even just that opening with, and I know we'll probably talk about that more with Shelly in the puppet shop. It's like iconic to me for, for this series in general. Oh, I love that. Eric, what are your first thoughts when you think of Pinocchio? Oh, it's just Pee Wee. You know, I loved Pee Wee so much as a kid. I loved all the movies. I loved Pee Wee's Playhouse. I saw Pee Wee's Playhouse on Broadway in the early 2000s. I'm so jealous um, of that. Wow. Yeah, so I was a big Pee Wee fan. Well, I mean, it was Pee Wee was always on in my household. Big top Pee Wee, all of it. I've seen all of it, done all of it. And, you know, he was a big part of my childhood as as for a lot of us 80s babies, you know, he was a, he was a big part of our lives. So, you know, we will really miss Pee Wee. He's the best Paul Rubens. Yeah, we we just lost Paul what a couple of months ago. It's been very recent. That was my answer. The first thing I think of when I think of Pinocchio is Paul Rubens. We're calling him Pee Wee because this was the height of his Pee Wee phase, but he was a a great actor. That I was curious about that. Was this during the height of it or was it like slightly before even? Like he was kind of up and coming? Yeah, it, it was slightly before. That's true. He'd already created the character. Right. It, it hadn't for like the live show. Yeah. Right. The live shows. It hadn't quite taken off the way it would. That's true. Yeah. And I think, I think it's, what's cool is like, obviously if you love Pee Wee, you get a lot from this 
episode, but I don't think he's like just doing Pee Wee Herman as Pinocchio. I think he's giving Pinocchio his own life in the part. I agree. I completely agree. How familiar is everyone with the original source material? Eric, have you read the book? I have not. I remember being a lot younger and I do remember starting to read the book. It is quite a daunting book for a child to read. And I I was being brave as I was a young child to try to read it. My mom bought me like a leather bound one and I was like trying and like, it's a lot. (laughs) I I have have exactly the same story. Honestly, I've read like the first three chapters and then I, I think I gave up. I'm sorry to say. Guys, I was the complete opposite. I had this book in my school library. And it was the edition illustrated by Charles Folkard. And if anyone who's listening knows those illustrations, they are just beautiful. And maybe that's what inspired me to keep reading the book. And I I love the original story. And yeah, a beautifully illustrated copy goes a long way to helping a child read a long book. That makes a lot of sense. I did not Mm. have an illustrated copy. (laughs) That might have helped me. Well, I think we also, like, we grow up with this expectation that fairy tales are kind of short. So then when we meet like meet the novels like this and Wizard of Oz and stuff, you're like, oh, wait, this is like a commitment. Exactly. <laughs> the same Good way to put it. I like that. <laughs> this is one of my boyfriend's favorite fairy tales. The source material of it is. So we've, we've talked about it a lot because it's kind of bonkers. <laughs> and is this the only fairy tale theater that's based on more of a novel rather than a short fairy tale? Yeah. I will stand corrected. Yeah. Yeah, the, I think it is. The Snow Queen yeah. is like kind of long. It's, it's one of the it's, longer yeah. fairy tales and Beauty and the Beast as well. But Aladdin, Aladdin was pretty long. Oh yeah, yep. That's a, that's another big, biggie. Mm. But yeah, this one always stood out. It was always because it's not a traditional when I think of fairy tales. Pinocchio doesn't seem to be a fairy tale. I think Disney did a lot to bring like Pinocchio into the mainstream sort of fairy tale children's story world. For sure. And mm. like a very specific brand of Pinocchio that is not at all like the original novel to me. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the little bit. And let's be fair, neither is this one. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this episode, even though like it takes a lot of plot points that veer away from the book, the vibes of it fit the novel the best to me. Yeah, like the high, the kind of high comedy goofiness of it obviously like the uber italianness they're trying to bring to it i think it's of of all the adaptations i've seen and i've I've seen the disney i've seen the recent guillermo del toro which i loved i think that this one is probably the closest to the book just in in the style interesting i wasn't expecting to hear that what do we remember thinking of the episode when we first saw it I, i think we all first saw it as kids For me, I remember always thinking it was kind of a complicated story. I remember liking the episode. I don't remember loving it. I I kind of don't really remember having very strong feelings about it one way or the other, but I'm I'm sure I'm I'm probably alone in that, Eric. I think I like it so much because of Pee-wee, you know? Because when I watched it, Pee-wee was in his height, his full Pee-wee vibe, you know, the big adventure had already come out and Baby's Playhouse was on TV because I, I, you know, I was born in the late 80s. So I, yeah, so when I, this was actually one of the ones that I also had without the artwork that we had rented way too many times. My mother had gotten sick of it at that point. She's like, you know what, we're just gonna, we're gonna just keep this one. (laughs) Because I really was, I was that, I was that obsessed with Pee Wee. I had a Pee Wee doll. Like, you know, if this was, it was, it was another moment for me to see him doing his thing. So you know, I, I I loved it. It was always a good one for me. So wonderful, Doug. What do you remember? I remember being unnerved by this episode because <laughs> I will speak not for all Australians by any means, but I don't have any recollection of Pee Wee Herman being on television in Australia or anyone talking about it or there being any merchandise. I became aware of it when I was a lot older and like you know, American pop culture was a bit more widespread. But no, in the 80s as a child, I was never aware of Pee Wee Herman to the point where this episode just confused me, maybe even alienated me a bit. Plus the cover artwork was very different from the rest. It was very dark. Yeah. So was- yeah, there were a few things with this episode which kind of made me think, this is not like the others. There are no princesses. There are no witches. And that was always my draw with the fairy tale theatre. I kind of needed that element. And yeah, it always stood apart a little bit. Yeah, unnerved me, but not in like a bad way, but in just like a cautious way. 
That's a great answer. Liz? Pinocchio in general was a big story for me when I was a kid. I love the, the Disney one, even though I also found it kind of scary. My mom dressed me and my sister up as Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket for Halloween one year. So there's just always Pinocchio memories. I remember watching it, the Disney one on Christmas when I had like a terrible earache and I was like lying on the couch. Kind of, it was like a comfort watch. So I know I was excited to see this other version of it with a you know an actor that I and a character that I really loved and I don't think it disappointed because even though it deters from the Disney one it has like the the same footprints you know school book puppet show whale (laughs) like I said a bit of a complicated story (laughs) for sure excellent we're going to start our rewatch and recap and Like all episodes, we start with Shelley's introduction. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Welcome to Fairy Tale Theater. Tonight's tale comes from Carlo Collodi's famous Italian classic about a little wooden marionette who becomes a real alive boy. Pinocchio. I love her introduction here. She's in Geppetto's workshop and she's almost dressed like a puppet hanging her hands like she's on strings i loved it i thought she looked beautiful she even puts on a little bit of a fake italian accent at the end do we want to talk about the fake italian accents in this episode i think i think we have to yeah it's for sure (laughs) is anyone in this episode actually italian great question (laughs) <laughs> um, I think I think Vincent Schiavelli. Is oh yeah, he is. Schiavelli yep. and uh, Vito Scotti. I think and Jim Belushi. <laughs> uh, Jim Belushi. I was about to say, is Jim Belushi Italian? And well, interestingly I mean, enough, the three of them probably have the subtlest accents. Yes, <laughs> true. Since they, didn't, they don't have to put it on. And then I think Don Novello, who's the narrator, I think he's Italian because he was in like The Godfather and he was like in a lot of things. He always played like like a weird priest. He was even like the weird priest, Father Guido and Casper. He oh, that was yeah. like his character that showed up a lot, Father Guido, even on Saturday Night Live that's, and stuff. Yeah, that's an <laughs> SNL character. Yeah. yeah. Well, Belushi, I think Schiavelli, I think they, you know, of Italian descent, but I, I think they're all American born. I think Vito Scotti was actually, he might've actually been born in Italy. I'm not, I'm not positive on that. I'll have to check. Well, we can definitely agree. It's a very noble attempt by everyone to sound like Mario from Mario Brothers. Vito was born in Italy. He was. But yeah, it was a little... I don't know if we keep keep needed to go a real live a boy. Like, it was a little... It was was very theatrical. Yeah. It's a little little cheesy, but I don't know. I I think it's fun, but I also can understand (laughs) people being like, all right. It is kind of like Mario. <laughs> that's, that's a good way. Mario, Lu- Mario, Luigi. <laughs> well, it is Italian, but it's kind of it's. You get the feeling they're not going for actual. If you go to Italy, this isn't what people sound like. It's more of a cartoony kind of telling. At least that's how I took it. They like there? listened to that's amore on repeat, and they were like, <laughs> "All right, we got it." <laughs> And like, didn't the same sort of thing occur when that film House of Gucci came out and everyone did that Italian accent? Or whatever accent that was that Gaga was doing. Yeah. I don't know. That was, that was, it's a thing. It's a go-to. <laughs> it's a thing. It is. And like Moonstruck, I think as well, you know, <laughs> in, in this oh, era yeah. of, of movies for sure. My cousin Vinny. My cousin Vinny. Yeah. We finished Shelley's introduction and we get our cast list. And I was watching this cast list and I had forgotten just how many really great character actors were in this. James Coburn. I completely forgot that he was in this and he's our main villain. James Belushi. Vito Scotti. We discussed he's our actual Italian born. I remember him from Gilligan's Island. I, this guy was guest starred on every TV show in the 60s. He was on The Flying Nun. He was on Batman. He was on everything. I'd completely forgotten he was in this too, but great character actor. Cool to see him in here. 